so it's pretty easy to put it back. Have you ever seen this annoying message? Your disk doesn't have enough free space. Well, apparently this is a global problem for the MacBook users as you are lazy but you need to delete some files to make free space. And it might give you further frustration as you learn that this 250GB storage is physically attached to the logic board inside your MacBook or technically described as soldered to the logic board. So it's impossible for you to remove it or take it off and upgrade it to higher capacity yourself. And the same thing applies to our personal Apple Silicon MacBooks. So we decided to overcome this problem for ourselves by creating the world's first Apple Silicon MacBook with a removable and upgradable SSD storage. Well, it almost looked like the original ones, except this green prototype adapter here. It blends better in black anyway but costs more just for a prototype. Just like that. No micro soldering required. So why do you need removable SSD? Well, the first obvious reason is upgradability. This is a 250GB SSD, but you can easily swap it out for 500GB, 1TB, or even 2TB SSD. All you need to do is plug it into the slot and revive the unit using a secondary Mac. You will then have plenty of free space to store your files and keep using the same MacBook without needing to buy a new one. By adding this M.2 port, you might wonder if the SSD speed is impacted in any way. So we decided to find out whether this modification slows down your modular SSD. But first, you need to have the Blackmagic Design speed test installed. Once you launch the app, and you'll see the write speed hits around 3000 MB per second with the read speed coming in at around 3000 MB per second. This is the same kind of speed you get from the soldered 250GB configuration from the factory for M1 Mac. So it seems that adding M.2 port to make NANs removable and upgradable does not reduce this performance at all. If you're enjoying this video so far, we'd really appreciate if you could help us out by hitting that subscribe button as we're aiming to hit 50k subs before the end of the year and your support would mean the world to us. Next up, repairability is another critical reason why this SSD should be removable because the SSD is somehow necessary for charging the battery. Yes, you heard that right. You need the SSD NANs in place to charge the battery. So what will happen if the SSD is corrupted or dead? Let us make a simple experiment since the SSD is now easily removable. First, we need to make sure the battery is half charged, then plug in the USB-C charger along with the amp meter, then it shows the voltage spikes to 20 volts and the current starts to rise up to 2 amps which indicates the battery is charging properly and everything is functioning as it should. Now, we will shut down the computer and disconnect the charger from the USB-C port. At this point, I need you to note that the battery is still powering the logic board as it remains connected. The key point here is, do not remove the modular SSD while the battery is still connected and powering the logic board because many things could go wrong. But for the sake of science and to prove our point today, we will carefully remove the modular SSD from the logic board. Now we will try plugging the USB-C charger back in to see if the connected battery will charge. Notice the charger just stuck at 5V and never boosts to 20V, then restarts itself getting stuck in a loop. This behavior indicates that the battery isn't charging since the current fluctuates and never stabilizes at 2 amps like before. And in fact, your Mac doesn't even boot or chime at all without the NANs, and this scenario is what you will face if one of the NANs go bad or perhaps corrupted iBoot 2 firmware within the NANs. That's why having this SSD NAN removable is essential, so a repair shop like us or even the end user can easily replace it and determine whether the issue lies with the SSD all without needing to do any micro soldering so we don't have to worry about that soldered storage again. While it's true that corrupted NANs can be a reason for charging issues, please, please and please do not instantly blame the NANs when you encounter a charging issue or no power issue. Always refer back to the schematics and measure all the voltage rails on the CD3217 and the charging IC first. This proves that Apple could make the MacBook modular, just like the Mac Studio, but they just choose not to. 
So here we have a business proposal for you Apple. Why not make the SSD modular and upgradable just like this one? You could sell the new modular SSDs on your website with storage options ranging from 500GB to 2TB or even 8TB and that way you'd still make extra money by offering larger storage options to customers. And for all of you watching this video, just imagine if you can buy 2TB modular SSD from Apple and then remove your current 250GB SSD from the logic board then swiftly plug in the new 2TB SSD into the socket and resuscitate the Mac with the secondary MacBook then just wait for several minutes and you finally got it to work again. As you check the system report, you are now having a removable 2TB SSD storage to step up your game. And yes, this modification fits perfectly inside the chassis. Allowing you to close the back case without any bulging or interference. For everyone's watching now, what do you think? Is this great or not so great? Oh, and by the way, these PCBs don't have names yet. So do you have any cool names? Let us know what you think in the comment section. And for those of you watching without subscribing, help us reach 50k subs before the end of this year. Hit that subscribe button because you're all awesome. And we will see you again on the Eyeball for RCC channel, reverse engineering at its best. Have a nice day and thanks for watching. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it's also possible for the MacBook Air or the Mac Mini.